You're listening to NGSE Sports Radio. Hear us live on NGSEsports.com where you can get awesome analysis for all things sport. Or check out our podcasts on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, and much more. For our latest videos, head to NGSC Sports YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at NGSC Sports and like us on Facebook. NGSC Sports. We never stop. That is why, man, he said, hey, did you watch the Premier League? I'm a huge Arsenal fan. That would be even more reason for me to punch him in the face. Oh, oh dude, I love Arsenal. Oh, God. Oh, Manchester. Yeah, he, he, would, he would be a United fan because, because that's who was good. Because he walks alone? <laughs> or, or because he's just heard of him or seen him on a movie or something? Yeah, there you go. That's because uh, that's what LeBron said. He's got the oh guy Jesus! To... I could I could fucking kill LeBron. <laughs> I could kill LeBron James for that. Oh, part ownership like you... stake in Liverpool. I mean, Jesus it's... Christ! My team needs to win like United. It's like, oh no! It's like no, no, no! You you don't know what you're asking for, LeBron. <laughs> that means you want the saddest coach in the NBA to tell you how terrible everyone else on your team is. <laughs> Dude, that guy has been getting absolutely <laughs> massacred this week. Yeah. Which sucks because his cool idea was really cool, but like, just don't say that. Just, you, you almost got me to like you, and then it's like, oh, no. 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 <sighs> That's okay. Well, let's go ahead and start the pod. Let's. Let's talk about LeBron later on in the so Afford nice. Affair podcast or never. Um, welcome That's... to the Afford Affair podcast. That, well, that was, folks, there was your NBA preview for the year. <laughs> oh, God, yes. Oh, that's that's it. That's literally it. We'll talk a little college basketball when it hits about February, but that's that's the extent of our NBA talk this year. Uh, welcome to the Foreign Affair Podcast, episode two two one. I am Edward Green, joined by my colleague in crime, Wes Bradshaw, and uh, we have a dynamite episode for you guys today. Um, we are going to finally wrap up. It will be done after today. It's the the final rundown. Teams six through one. In last year's Premier League, we're finally going to put a bow on the 2017-18 season just about nine days before the start of the 18-19 season. So we're actually, if you think about it, we're like ahead of schedule for us, really. Um, but we're going to oh, story. The week you. after it started. So. There you go. Um, <laughs> very quick news and notes we're going to run through here with just uh, uh, we get to laugh at Everton. Um <clears throat> Not that we ever would. I mean, I we are we are respectable journalists who would never ever laugh at at, at Everton. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're also so we're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna hit the watch for, and then get into uh, so raw. As always, the podcast is presented by NGSC Sports at NGSCSports.com. We never stop. And uh, the Premier League is. Finally about to for the 17-18 season as we finish it off here. So we are going to start West. It was we thought about doing it last week, and then we're like, no, nope, hold off. And, and instead of ending with crap, we're gonna begin this uh segment with crap. Uh and that is Arsenal. Arsenal, uh, for I believe the first time under Arsene Wenger finish outside the top four. Um uh, no, mm-hmm. actually, uh no. They finished uh, outside the top four last season. I believe six, though, is their lowest finish uh, in the Arsene Wenger era, which did come to an end at the end of the season. Arsenal finishing sixth, um, seven points clear of Chelsea, uh, who finished above them in fifth place. Um, a, a season filled with turmoil and strife and, and big changes. Alexis Sanchez in the middle of the season – getting swapped for Henrik Mkhitaryan, uh, neither one of which really set the world on fire in their time there. Um, they dealt with injuries. Santi Cathorla, uh was hurt the majority of the season. 
uh, as were a couple other players. Um, and then players that they had brought in in previous seasons just could not find their footing, uh, including uh, their, their back guys of Shakhtar and Mustafi, who just never seemed to regain that form from last year that he had in the early part before he got injured, as well as Granite Xhaka. Just, he was good for about two really good wonder strikes every couple months, and that was about it for the positives. Um, just not a great season. Um, overall, um, you know, it's like, Hey, at least we can get, you know, an FA cup win or, or something like that. But Arsenal couldn't even really manage that. Uh, they did make it to the Europa league semifinal where they ended up falling, uh, to Atletico Madrid. Um, and of course in, in, I think a match that absolutely showed, the Arsenal experience from last year, if not the last couple of years, was the first leg of that Atletico Madrid match, uh, where uh, they go. Uh, Atletico Madrid just loses their mind. Um, Sime Vrajjako, um shut up Siri, um, gets a double yellow card in the first ten minutes. Arsenal take till the sixty-first minute to score. And 20 minutes later, give up an equalizer to 10 men at Let It Go. Granted, it's Antoine Griezmann, who, I don't know if you saw this summer, he's pretty good. Um, but that just set the stage for them to end up losing the fine, uh, the semifinal tie uh, in, in Atletico. Um, as in, the, in the League Cup, they did make the final against Manchester City, uh, where they got pounded 3-0. They went one and done in the FA Cup, where they lost 4-2 to Nottingham Forest. Um just and just not a really great season from them overall. I mean, I'm trying to look here and see what even would have been their biggest win. And right now, I would have to say their biggest win was ta- it was at home against Tottenham 2 0 and on the road against Burnley 1 0. Like, that's probably their biggest wins of the season in the Premier League. So, a very disappointing season, even though they did make a cup semifinal and a cup final. I'm going to give them a D, though, just because to get that close and not finish it off just hurts really bad, along with a very bad Premier League season, along with everything going on in the in Arsene Wenger with the rest of that club. I, I have to give them a D because like a lost season for Arsenal, even with some of the deep runs they made. Hey, they did win the Community Shield. There you go. I'm sorry. They did win a trophy last year. My bad. My bad on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, a 12-point drop from the year before. Um, losses went from 9 to 13. It was It was a really – Poor season by Arsenal standards. You know, back to back here, his last two years at the club, uh, Arsene Wenger finishes outside a Champions League spot for for you know the first time in his time at Arsenal. Uh, they finished, uh, that's their lowest finish since ninety four ninety five wow. when they actually finished twelfth that season. Um, so it was it, it was a poor season. Uh, it wasn't helped by the sagas surrounding Mesut Ozil, the saga surrounding um, Alexis Sanchez, the saga surrounding Arsene Wenger. I mean, it was it was a season of Arsenal fan TV's, you know, orgasmic. <laughs> Honest, <laughs> you know, it was it was just, it was a terrible season. And, I mean, really, for Arsenal, for the firepower that Arsenal have, for the spending power that Arsenal have, everything Arsenal have, I've got to give them an F. Okay. I mean, you know, it's one thing to finish sixth. It's another thing to just implode, which is pretty much what they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, did not win a road match in this entire calendar year. Um, and Premier League, Europa, anything. It was, it was a terrible season, and it was capped off. End of Arsene Wenger. 
you know, for Finger, who I know we love Arson Finger, <laughs> as in we love Arson Finger to be the butt of our jokes. Um, he's gone. He needed to be gone. You, know, you could say a couple seasons ago, definitely after last season when they didn't make the Champions League, I thought it was time for him to go. You know, Arsenal, for whatever reason and whatever goes on in the head of that board, you know, they they kept him around for one more run. It was disastrous. You know, they – and here's another thing that kind of just makes me shake my head. You know, Mesut Ozil is out of contract, and you give him one of the biggest contracts in the Premier League. Yeah. And now you're kind of – you know, now Unai Emery and whoever may be next, if Emery doesn't stick around long, yeah. they're stuck with Mesut Ozil now on huge wages for a guy who, you know, truth be told, yes, there are some matches he has huge impacts in, but for just as many as he has a huge impact, he'll disappear. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now your best player that you're tethered to is this kind of mer- mercurial, you know, albeit very talented, but this mercurial player who is not the guy that you want to build your club around. But unfortunately, that's what Arsenal's had to do because that's where they decided to put their money. Personally, I would have cashed in on Ozil and gone out and, you know, brought in some better players. Uh, Pierre Emmerk Aubameyang came in in January transfer window. Mm -hmm. Hey, he had some moments, <laughs> mm-hmm. but you know, I think I think Obama Yang would have been a good seasonal. Mm-hmm. They come in and carry the load all of a sudden. Wind and is in a team that's in turmoil and falling. He never really had a chance. I expect a better season from him, but at the same time, I think they've also bought Obama Yang on the. You know, he's. I think he's on the backside of his career now. Mm-hmm. So Arsenal, unfortunately, has spent a lot of money. They spent a lot of money for some old guys, and then cheaped out where they could have gone and really improved themselves. But I also think that you know a lot of people fit about their transfer dealings. It's hard to bring in top guys when you've basically got a coach that anyone who pays any attention can see is under the gun and could be on his way out at any time. It's hard to go out and get top guys who are going to sign up for that. And then when you sit there, you look at the way Arsenal played this past year, you look at, you know, how just insipid they were sometimes in that attack. You look at how porous the defense is, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting kind of rebuild job for Unai Henry. I think they've had a pretty good off season, mm-hmm. but at the same time, Arsenal under Arsene Wenger, they have fallen. I think they've really fallen behind the pack. Yeah. Um, where we almost joke, is there even a big six anymore? There is, they're in it, but they are, I mean, they're nowhere, they're not in the same stratosphere right now with City and Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Um, Tottenham has shown their dominance over the last few years. And Tottenham definitely has a better core of players than Arsenal. Uh, United definitely have a better squad than Arsenal. Mm -hmm. United, of course, we'll talk about them (laughs) some. But, you know, that's that's kind of its own kettle of fish right now. (laughs) And even with everything going on at Chelsea, that's still a better team. So, uh, you know, for Arsenal, I give them an F. I give them an F, and I think part of that is also a a grade that has built up over time mm-hmm. because Arsene Wenger, they held on to Arsene Wenger too long, and Arsene Wenger held on too long. And it has been to the major, major detriment of that club. Horrible season for Arsenal. Um I will I will just say a couple things. One, we do have to give them credit. They did win a road Premier League game in 2018. Oh, it was the man. last game of the year against Huddersfield. They won one day. So good, That's right. good for That's them. Right. Good. I'll tell you both. So yeah, I was wrong. There you go. Um, I will also say you mentioned Obama Yang. And, you know, we talked a lot about the, the clubhouse discord that seemed to kind of be there for a while. 
Aubameyang was brought in mid-season to kind of replace uh, Alexander Lacazette, who was their big summer signing. He's the guy, Wes, who we've always said, you know, in, in the years we've been doing this podcast, every time it seemed like we went into a summer and previewed Arsenal, it was like, man, Mm-hmm. They look really good. If they can just get a consistent striker, I mean, this yeah. team this team might win the league. Um, and they finally kind of got that guy in Lacazette, and then he just never really came good for them. Um, and so I, the Obama-Yang purchase really seemed like a panic move mm-hmm. that, like, Lacazette's not getting it done. Oh, God, we have to do something now. And so they make a, a near-record signing for Obama-Yang. Uh, in the middle of the season, which I imagine just destroyed Lacazette completely. Um, and so to do that, just it, it spoke to this weird desire to like win now. But as you said, Aubameyang, he's 29. He's, he's not mm-hmm. getting that much younger. And his best seasons may be behind him at this point. He did score 10 goals for Arsenal not many of them were all that important. So I, I don't see how he's that big of an upgrade for this club. So I, I I think Emery has a lot of work to do. He might be the one to do it. He was, he was great at Sevilla. Um, and then mm-hmm. uh, even though he, he's held to, I wouldn't say an impossibly high standard, but an incredibly high standard at PSG, he did kind of fail there. Um, well, and yeah, you know, I, I just want to bring up Emory because I think everybody kind of panned the hiring when it first happened. Mm-hmm. But really, I mean, when you look back, Emory's been a good manager. You know, you look at his time in Spain. I mean, he's done great things. He he went to PSG when PSG he he was kind of in one of those positions where he, unless he came in and won the Champions League. He didn't stand a chance because he wasn't that big name manager for PSG. That's fair. And you know, yeah, I mean, we can we can give him some shit because he obviously has to take part of the responsibility for them in the Champions League. Uh, but you know, especially this past season, when you look at it, he was given Neymar, and immediately that um, that relationship was doomed kind of from day one Mm -hmm. when Neymar just let it be known. Oh yeah. I'll I'll make the rules around here now. Mm -hmm. And and unfortunately for Emery, uh, ownership and management was like, well, yeah, yeah. He does kind of make the rules. now. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, shit, thank you for cutting my legs out from under me. Well, now I have to wonder real quick now that you've said that about Neymar and, and I'm nowhere near comparing them level wise. But mm-hmm. Neymar is a very, I would say, mercurial talent. And, and well, he didn't have the full backing of the board, as you said. Mm-hmm. Emery wasn't really able to work with Neymar very well. My question is, Aubameyang is kind of the same way. Again, not nearly the absolute talent Neymar is, but mm-hmm. he is also a guy that can run very hot and cold. And so I'm wondering, since he was also sort of a record signing for Arsenal... If could that same thing happen where will Emery have full control of being able to handle Obama Yang? Because that's that's the key. I feel like there he's gonna have to keep building that defense. But I mean, if if he can't get Obama Yang to score goals, it's it's gonna be tough for them. I agree with that. Also, though, I completely feel that Neymar is in a different stratosphere than a Bumiang when it comes to maybe having player power. Okay. Because you think, I mean, Neymar is in that little group with, you know, Messi, Ronaldo. Sure. Neymar. I mean, kind of that three-man group where, you know, they, they are such stand-above talents mm-hmm. that they get their way a lot more. Than say an Aubameyang or well, let's just say a Mo Salah or a Harry Kane, mm-hmm. you know something like that. They're just and, and as good as say Aubameyang and Salah and Harry Kane are, 
you know, they're not, they don't have the, I would say they don't have the sway mm-hmm. of maybe those, those other three. So you say, you think that even with the, the fact that he was a record signing for Arsenal, you don't think Aubameyang will carry that kind of power with the board? No. That, okay. And, and my other reason is because, you know, Neymar, even if Neymar's having a pissy time with you, mm-hmm. Neymar's still scoring an assistant all the time. Mm-hmm. And Neymar, and really Neymar, Messi, and Ronaldo, Ronaldo maybe not so much of late, but, you know, especially a Messi and a Neymar, those guys play positions where they can directly influence the game a lot more. Mm-hmm. Where a Yang is more of a... And truth be told, Aubameyang's become more of a target man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think one big thing about having that player power and being that guy who can make those kind of decisions, it comes down to the fact that, you know, you might be the record signing, but you're not the best player in the world. Mm-hmm. It's true. And you're not even on that. You're not even in the discussion to be the best player in the world. Where Neymar was in the discussion, Neymar was the world record mm-hmm. signing. He wasn't just the club record signing. He was the world record signing by a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was coming. He's the massive commercial. And I think that's something, too, that helps those those guys is, I mean, they're the massive commercial appeal. I mean, PSG's freaking out if Neymar wants to leave because, shit, you know, yeah, we paid a lot for him. We'll get paid a lot for him. Damn, you know, think about how much we're going to start losing without having Neymar. Mm-hmm. Where for a bummy hang, I mean, What's Aubameyang doing other than selling a few more jerseys? Yeah. I mean, Aubameyang's not this massive media personality. I mean, you know, for Liverpool, you know, Virgil van Dyke's our record signing. Mm-hmm. Virgil van Dyke's not exactly pushing the worldwide meter when it comes to, <laughs> you know, and he's a, he's the world record, uh, you know, defensive signing. And Allison, the world record goalkeeping signing. Those guys ain't moving no needle like Neymar, though. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'll put it this way. I know at Liverpool anyway, if it came down to Virgil van Dijk arguing with Klopp, who do you think's out the door? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. And, yeah, that's – and Emery's not Klopp, but um, I think that Arsenal finally realized that they need someone to stay ship. And it'll be interesting over the next few years because, I mean, Emery, for whatever he brings in this year, he's not going to be favored to get back into the top four. Mm-hmm. So let's see how much of a leash Arsenal's going to give Emery, who once again is a good manager who's done well everywhere he's been. Yeah. You know what? Whatever, well, at PSG, he just didn't win the big one. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know, that, that's kind of like taking over an NFL team and going 13-3, and three, but not winning the Super Bowl. And, well, you didn't win it. You're fired. <laughs> that don't happen. <laughs> You know, if you, if you get hired and, uh, you know, if the Red Sox hired Alex Cora, you know, if he makes the playoffs for the next three years but doesn't win the World Series, I don't think they're going to fire him just because he didn't win the World Series. Isn't that what actually kind of what happened to John Farrell? Oh, well, there was, That's right, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot more going on with John Farrell. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's just – it's one of those things where football at the – at those really, like, super money clubs mm-hmm. – it is, it is so the way they look. Okay, yeah, so is Manchester, so is Barcelona, you know, so is Manchester United. You know, you're not the only one, only one team. But, uh, you know, I just, I think Emery was a victim of circumstance. And I fully believe that if it hadn't been for Neymar and him not getting along, Mm-hmm. I fully believe Emery most likely would have been back at Paris this year. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I think that was just – I think he's a victim of his uh, of his super-duper star. Mm-hmm. Well, so. um, I, as you said, I believe he will be given at least a little bit of time. Um, I don't believe they're going to moisey him. Um, I don't think so. At Arsenal. So, we'll, we'll have to see. I that. mean, uh, unless it's just falling apart. Oh, of course. <laughs> like, yeah, if he's if I mean, he's yeah, ninth in January. 11th or 12th. Yeah. yeah. But um, I, I think, like, if they're fifth, I, I don't think that's going to 
really be terrible no, for him. No. Um, I think as long as he stays in that top six but shows improvement mm-hmm. and shows that, you know, hey, we have a plan. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we have an idea of something that we want to do. You know, and and the and the answer is not you know by any world record players. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, just for this season with you know Vinger Vinger's last season, mm-hmm. yeah, it's an F for me. There you go. Um, back to the fifth place team and another very bad coaching situation. Uh, that would be Chelsea uh, failing on the final day of the season to make it into the Champions League spot. They instead uh, do take fifth place, 70 points, uh, 21 wins. Uh, They gave up 38, scored only 62, the lowest of the top six in terms of goal scored, um, which when you think about the team they have, seems kind of insane that that was the case. However, uh, Chelsea did did win things this year, and it wasn't the community shield. Um, They (laughs) did manage to... um, they did manage to win the um, – oh, God. What FA Cup. Yes, the FA Cup. Um, I don't know why they, they didn't do this here. Um, they did manage to win the FA Cup. Why is it from 2017-18? There we go. This is what I wanted. Because it was 2017-18. There we go. Um, so, yes, Chelsea, uh, who did beat Manchester United in the FA Cup to send – sort of Antonio Conte off in style. Um, Chelsea did get that win. Um, but again, they they did finish fifth uh, for the first time in 28 seasons. They lost to Tottenham at home, uh, which I'm sure didn't sit well with some of the, the fans there. Uh, there was, again, it transferred more to the summer, but there was more unrest with Tibor Courtois and then Nazard and what their future would be with the club. Uh, I had completely until I looked at this that in January transfer window they brought in Ross Barkley. Oh that, yeah, that was, I think I think most people are forgetting that. that was a thing because that's a pretty damn forgettable sign. Uh, speaking of forgettable signings, they did bring in Alvaro Morata from Real Madrid to uh, replace Diego Costa, um, which I believe was probably the right move. But I know I'm sure a lot of Chelsea supporters would have loved to have had him back. Um, But again, so yes, Chelsea did win the FA Cup. Uh, They made it uh, into the uh, the Champions League where they they made it to the round of 16. They lost to Barcelona um, after drawing 1-1 at home, uh, giving up that that semi-late goal to Messi, Messi's first goal at Stamford Bridge in his career. Um, They they lost at the uh, the Camp Nou uh, 3-0 to lose that one on aggregate. Uh, lost in the League Cup semifinals. I, I, they did win a trophy. Um, and, and in a season where we knew, like, again, we, we like to make the joke, there's now, there was a top six, mm-hmm. there was five, and then there was Arsenal. Um, we, we said a lot of times this year, there's going to be one pretty damn good team that's not going to the Champions League next year from the Premier League, and we didn't know, you know, was it going to be, was United ever going to fall off the wagon? Were Spurs going to run out of steam? Was Liverpool going to get tired from the Champions League run? Or was Chelsea just not going to be able to put it all together? And that was it. It was Chelsea. So it's, I can't ding them too hard for finishing fifth in this very top-heavy Premier League. They did win a trophy. Their, Their handling, though, of the Antonio Conte situation, as well as his handling of of a lot of situations there have left a lot to be desired. I'm going to give them a B minus. And that's it. That's because they won a trophy. Uh, if they had not, I probably would have put them in the C, C minus range, but they did win a trophy. So they, they had that going for them, which the next two teams we're talk we'll talk about did. not so um, I, I am going to give them a B minus still, still could have been a much better season. Um, but that, that FA cup run as well as making semifinals in the league cup um, that, that saves it a little bit for me. I'm going to give them a B minus. Uh, I think you may have taught me into the B minus. Like, like it's like an 80. It's the lowest of the. Yeah. 
it's like you being lower and you know we're calling your parents yeah um yeah you know my only well, my only concern with some of that is you know sometimes to some teams what does a domestic trophy really mean sure that yeah you know now now let's put it this way like this season if if Tottenham or Liverpool, I think, won the FA Cup, everybody, their fans will be like, oh, hell yeah, awesome, yeah. sweet. You know, um, where if City just won the FA Cup, they'd be like, well, what the fuck are we wasting our money on? <laughs> fuck the FA Cup, okay. Um, Chelsea. The, the, to me, it's hard for me to give Chelsea even a B minus. That's fair. Just because, yes, they did get a trophy. But man, when you just look at their season as a whole, mm-hmm. I mean, that thing was a freaking walking dumpster fire. Very inconsistent. Yeah. Not as bad, not as bad as um, Arsenal's dumpster no. fire. Don't get me wrong, but you know, Arsenal kind of had an epic dumpster fire. Yeah. Where Chelsea just had like a dumpster fire that kind of comes every once in a while for them anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, this isn't the first time that Chelsea have come off as champions and then just just kind of suck the next year. Yeah. <laughs> just haven't been able to live up to it. Obviously, it happened two years ago. Um, the loss of Diego Costa, while Diego Costa is a massive pain in the ass, yeah. ass Diego Costa meant championship team because he was, you know, that was a, that championship team was so like proper hard front to back. Mm-hmm. You know they had the good. They had the good defense. They had Angola Conte, obviously, who's yeah. proper hard as hell, as we know. Um, and, and then up front, you know, they were still proper hard because then you go Diego Costa, who the, the thing about Diego Costa is if he doesn't play for your team, you despise him. Mm-hmm. But man, that's not a bad guy to have, you know. Yeah. Um, that, that's not a bad guy to have. And I thought he just gave them this bite and this snarl the season before that could not be replicated. Mm-hmm. No matter what, Alvaro Morata is just not that guy. Mm-hmm. And I think Alvaro Morata took a lot of shit on the, for this team yeah, because he was that signing who came in and had to replace Costa. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of it was just this team really – it wasn't that Murata isn't a really good player. Mm-hmm. It's just that he's not Diego Costa, and that's what this team needed. Yeah, I agree. This is that's what that team needed to be able to play their game. And, and and when you don't have him, you just don't have him. And you can replace him with as good a player as you want, but that doesn't mean he can fully replace that player. Right. So I think that's what really hurt Chelsea a lot this year was. Um, the way it fell out with Costa and, you know, Murata. The thing is, when you look back at it, Murata wasn't that bad. Mm-hmm. It's just he had some he had some bad moments. And then because, you know, the Premier League is maybe the world's greatest soap opera, <laughs> you know, when when something goes wrong, it's not like, oh, okay, you know, we'll get him next time. It's, oh, my God, we spent all this money and this guy's a joke and he's terrible. Oh, my God. And, you know, for a week, every week you're hearing, well, what's wrong with Alvaro Morata? Chelsea spent all this money and now he's come in and he missed this shot. And, oh, my God, you know, this this isn't right. And they've overspent. And I think it just kind of built on him and built on him and built on him. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, finally it just kind of came down and, and unfortunately, the rest of the team wasn't living up to it either. I mean, Eden Hazard did not have a great season. No. Eden Hazard right now, they're bandying about all this money that, you know, they want from Real Madrid. Eden Hazard didn't have a 200 million pound season. I mean, he, he kind of helped his own bottom line when it, uh, you know, when it came to the, when it came to the World Cup. He helped himself, mm-hmm. but you know it, it's just it, it's it was a tough situation for Chelsea this year. Um, we knew from the start that this whole mess with Antonio Conte was going to boil over. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could see it from the summer on. It was just this isn't yeah 
oh, this isn't great. <laughs> and that that's just that's what happened is Conte Conte's a blood and fire and brimstone type manager. Mm-hmm. And as we've seen from Chelsea, especially, you can get away with that for a while. But this group of players has shown us that after a while, when they get tired, out. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's what they did to Mourinho. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I really think that championship season, I really think a lot of that was the Chelsea guys being pissed off and saying, you know, fuck Josie. You know, we're going to go win in spite of his ass. <laughs> I really think that's what that championship season had a lot of, was just spite behind it. But it, Chelsea were never impressive throughout the season. They had some injury problems. Uh, they had some form problems. For all the players that this team has signed and loaned out over the years, mm-hmm. why do they just seem like their depth is shit lately? I I don't know. You know that's that's just something that kind of pops up to me. It's like, yeah. damn, you know, y'all y'all buy all these players, mm-hmm. you send everybody on loan, but you know now, especially second half of last season, you ain't got nobody. Yeah, maybe keep a few of them. Yeah. Um, they they kind of had a hard luck going out in the Champions League. I say hard luck because, but they did it to themselves. Yeah, you know, I mean Barcelona just caught them. Mm-hmm. I, I I think it started kind of in that round where we were sitting here saying, you know, I don't think Barcelona's that great. <laughs> and Chelsea had their opportunities, and they just they fucked up a few too many times. They just made kind of some uncharacteristic mistakes, mm-hmm. and that knocked them out of that. Yeah, they did end the season on a high note in FA Cup. It was, um, I almost think at that point, it was, you know, who wants to fuck with their manager more? Yeah. You know, I mean, you had Josie on one side, and now don't get me wrong, I was thrilled that Chelsea won that FA Cup. Yeah. Just so Josie didn't win a trophy, that just made everything great for me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, the end of the year, it was kind of, I mean, you could tell even after that match, it's not like the Chelsea players were overly excited about it. Yeah. It was kind of those, oh, yeah. Well, cool. You know, we won. Hey, we probably got a buck for winning. Mm. Yeah, we probably made some money. Hey, that's a that's a piece of silverware I can put in my CV, you know, for, for when I can go to Barcelona <laughs> or Real Madrid. Um, so it was, it was kind of like a really nice consolation prize at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. But... I just I don't take that as really capping a great season or anything. So I'm I'm going to give them a C plus. Okay, I can't. I taught myself back into what I thought initially. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to give them a C C plus, um, because yeah, they got a trophy, but man, there was just there was way too much turmoil around this team this year. Mm-hmm. Just way too much turmoil. Yeah, that's fair. So uh, yeah. I I'm down for giving them that. That's that's totally fine. Um, but a team that did not have much turmoil this season. West. Well, well, we we got our moments. <laughs> yeah. Don't that, forget, don't forget that guy who went to Barcelona. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, that, uh, thankfully that did not break up too much of the season, though, mm-hmm. as far as the players were concerned. That is our fourth place side and the first team to get in the Champions League for next year that we'll talk about, and that is Liverpool, um, with their best season under Jurgen Klopp. Um, one of the things, just as I'm, I'm, I'm reading this, uh, as I'm going back to their season, this is the hilarious part. Their Premier League losses this season, to Man- one loss to Manchester City, one mm-hmm. loss to Tottenham, one mm-hmm. loss to United, mm-hmm. one loss to Chelsea, mm-hmm. and then one loss to Swansea. Yep. I, that, that one just sticks out so oddly to me. Alfie Mawson, player of the year for Swansea. Um, but other than that, a great season for Liverpool in the Premier League. Um, the only team really to just totally hammer Manchester City all year, um, except for that one Multiple weird, times. <laughs> weird loss early on. Um, the FA Cup run went uh, two and done. Uh, the League Cup run went one and done. But in the Champions League, which started with a, uh, a playoff win against Hoffenheim from Germany, I uh, saw them win their Champions League group. Uh, then beat Porto, Man City, and Roma. 
um, over uh, the three rounds to finally mm-hmm. end up facing Real Madrid in a very contentious final where we, we won't talk about that man, even though Klopp's still talking about him. Talk about that man. Klopp finally, Klopp finally had his say. Yeah. Um, but, right between the lines, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Um, a, a rough uh, final for Liverpool that saw them fall 3-1 to Real Madrid. Um, but overall, Wes, a, a very positive season for Liverpool. The emergence of Mohamed Salah as a, a legitimate goal-scoring threat. I don't see anybody out there calling him a one-season wonder, though. Just saying, you guys. You, you could throw at least one guy out there saying it. But I, I also don't think he's going to be. I don't think he's going to score as many goals as he scored this year. But I think he's going to still be a great player. Uh, Liverpool have something special in him. Um, but he was great. Uh, 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 Alex Oxley chamberlain coming over from Arsenal uh, just a little bit into the season really revitalized him as a player until the unfortunate injury late on, which unfortunately looks like it's going to sideline him for the remain for the entire. Uh, upcoming season, uh, but bringing in Virgil Van Dyke to stabilize what was really one of the the very glaring weak points uh, of the team that that back line uh, in front of young keeper Loris Karius, who had a good season up until that one last game. Yeah. Uh, but overall, a, a season of growth for for Liverpool and for Jurgen Klopp's side, even with getting rid of their quote unquote best player at the start of the season or who would have been called their best player at the start of the season, uh, Philip Coutinho eventually selling him to Barcelona. Our top asset. There you go. Uh, I am going to give this club an A. An un- unqualified A. I, I do understand. Yes, I do understand. They didn't win a trophy. I, I, I get that, people. I do. Um, but I, I think the progress shown with the way they fought – through the, the Champions League, I think that was very capable. Now, I do expect more from them this season than I did this past season. But again, grading them just on what I think our expectations were for them last year, I'm going to give them an A. I thought about A-, minus, but you make a Champions League final as, as, as a not top, 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 top level club. I think that's really well and. For all we know, they might have won it, if not for the dick himself. So I, I, I'm going to give them an A. All right, all right. Um, you know, the story of the Liverpool season goes all the way back to last summer's transfer window when, by God, everything seemed to go to hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, it started off well enough with bringing in uh, Mo Salah. And then that's where everything just kind of went crazy because everyone knew Liverpool wanted Virgil van Dyke. Everyone knew yeah. Virgil van Dyke wanted to go to Liverpool. Yeah. And um, something to this day, I can't tell you exactly what, something went across the ass of <laughs> Southampton. And they said, oh, no. <laughs> and it could have been just the fact that that's where Liverpool had gone shopping for about three or four consecutive summers. Yeah. Um, you know, they just saw Sadio Mane have a great year. And then I think I think it just kind of pissed them off that everyone just assumed, well, this is going to happen because Southampton will give in and sell. Right. So I think Southampton were like, you know what? Fuck it. We're not selling this guy. <laughs> and that was where it started to kind of get tough for Liverpool. Um, Nabi Keita, you know, we looked at getting Nabi Keita in all damn summer. Mm-hmm. And then that didn't materialize. So now you've kind of got the Anfield faithful, you know, getting a little up in arms like, shit, we didn't get that defense any better. We still have a new goalkeeper. <laughs> um, damn it, we, we, we need reinforcements. Da, da, da. It's Oxley Chamberlain. Why the hell did you spend 30 million pounds on him? Jesus, y'all don't know what you're doing. Um, and then the Coutinho saga decides it wants to start near the end of the, um, the summer where suddenly Coutinho has a back injury. Yeah. And yeah, just everything looks like it could fall apart for Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And then I've got to give it to the man. Jurgen Klopp pulled it together and he held it together and he did it with a a massive German hug. 
<laughs> that said, boys, we're not going to let this. We're not going to let this uh, tear our season down. We're not going to let this make us fall apart. Uh, good bit of news we got right near the end of the window. It might have been right after the window. Hey, you know what? We did sign Kata. He'll be here next year. Yay. But hey, that, but hey, you know what? That felt a hell of a lot better than, well, too bad. <laughs> um, and then, of course, come the January market, Liverpool uh, shake the world up in January. Sell Coutinho for, at that point, the – at that point was officially the second highest fee of all time. Mm-hmm. because uh, the um, Mbappe deal did not actually go through until this summer. Mm-hmm. So at that time, that was the second biggest deal of all time. And then we turn around, and they kind of shock us. Holy shit, we got Virgil. And of course, at that point, you know, Virgil Van Dyke, man, this is, you know, this is the guy we wanted. This is the guy we needed. You know, this is going to help the defense. And by God, it did. Mm-hmm. Liverpool's defense in the second half of the season um, – when you when you look at it, the the changes from the beginning of the season to the second half, I mean they were big. You know, um, Trent Alexander Arnold solidified being the right back. Mm-hmm. You know, Andrew Robertson took about three months before he became the left back, mm-hmm. and he was an absolute revelation. Um, suddenly, when Virgil Van Dyke was on the field, man, you know, Lovren didn't look quite as fucked up. <laughs> Nats best- didn't look. One of the best defenders in the world, Deshaun Watson. You, um, you know, Matip suddenly looked a lot more self-assured. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we made the goalie switch around that time. God just didn't do a bad job. Mm-hmm. Once again, I think it helped that um, he had Virgil van Dijk in front yeah. of him. Uh, you know, Andrew Robertson, for all the talk about Liverpool and money, Andrew Robertson cost us £8 million. Pounds. Mm-hmm. And we got what may be... You know, arguably the best left back in the Premier League. Now, I know there's a few others, Spurs included. Well, you know, could could argue that point, but um, for what Klopp does, for what Liverpool does, Andrew Robertson looks like he was born to do it, and he had a magnificent second half of the season. Uh, for Liverpool, you know, the second half of the season turned into making runs, having the huge scoring games. Uh, Salah, obviously, 44 goals on the year. Uh, Firmino, I think, scored a total of about 26 or 27. Mane ended up with 20 goals. Basically, between the three on 91 goals. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, that's you know, Spanish-level big three kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when they're scoring nearly 100 goals between them, that's, you know, that's BBC or um, the trio <laughs> doing that kind of stuff usually. I actually have the totals in front of me uh, for, okay. the, for the entire season. Uh, Salah had 44, Mane had 20, so that's 64. Firmino had 27, so that's okay. 91. Yeah, 91. Yes, 91. Um, and then you add into the fact that, you know, those three played so well together. It was just like, it was like from day one, it just clicked for those guys. Mm-hmm. And I mean, really, it was from day one as, you know, the Premier League gets going. Suddenly, here's this Mo Salah who... Oh, God, I can't believe you spit in a Chelsea reject. <laughs> yes, because Chelsea just has the best record in selling off players, right? Yeah. Hell, I'd, I'd love to get some more Chelsea rejects <laughs> at this point. Who's um, this Kevin De Bruyne fellow? Yeah, seriously. He doesn't know what he's doing, does he? Um, but Liverpool greatly benefited from the fact that that front three stay healthy most of the season. Um, the longest time missed was back in – I want to say around October, um, I believe Mane missed about six weeks. Uh, but other than that, Salah stayed really healthy this season. Um, and Firmino was Firmino was just a freaking horse. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, that, that guy, he, he got ridden like he was in. And he just, he just came to play every day. Uh, Klopp took some grief around the middle of the year when he was rotating. That worked out, obviously, by the end of the year because you still had some fresh legs yeah. as they made their deep run. Um, Liverpool kind of had some stutters down the down the stretch. Mm-hmm. All those cost themselves a Champions League yes. spot. Um, that is pretty much directly attributed to the fact that they were running out of midfielders mm-hmm. and they were playing three games a week. Yes. Because they were playing two Premier League matches and a Champions League match <laughs> in the run-up. That, that's what you have to watch out for. That's that's kind of the we call Europa the poison chalice. Mm-hmm. 
that's the poison chalice of making deep Champions League runs sometimes. Mm-hmm. Is that you know if if you're having any injury issues, then you could be up shit's creek. Mm-hmm. And luckily Liverpool were still able to navigate. You know, when you look at Liverpool's record, I think they had a couple less wins. They were, they were actually one point off of last season. Okay. But they had one less loss. Um, but they had two more draws. Mm-hmm. And that's been the booger boo for Klopp since he's come to Liverpool, have been the draws. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been the losses. Mm-hmm. You know, they've done pretty well with the wins and the losses. It's the draws. Ten two years ago, 12 this past season. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, it's been unlocking some teams, being able to break some things down. Uh, yeah, hopefully some of these off-season additions are going to help with that. You know, obviously there's a, you know, you have to look at where your weak points are and you've got to try to improve that. And it looks like Liverpool have tried to do that here in the off-season. But, I mean, as for last season, they make the run all the way to the Champions League final. Um you know, at Liverpool, we always kind of say, you know, make us dream. And, man, this team did it. Mm-hmm. They absolutely did it. They played some of the most scintillating football on earth this season. Um, the destruction of Manchester City over two legs in the Champions League, I think, was I think was the most impressive tie of the Champions League. Mm-hmm. You know, when it comes down to what a team did to someone else, and when you look at the two teams, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, I think Bayern Munich beat Bashek just like 7-0. Who fucking cares? <laughs> I, I would also, I, I would throw as a close second, not, not in a two-leg tie, uh-huh. but in a one-match setting, uh-huh. Roma's deconstruction of Barcelona that Barcelona yeah. never yeah. answered. I would also give that, but oh, over yeah. two legs, I, I would oh, say yeah. Liverpool City is better. Oh, yeah. And when you look at just Liverpool. And I believe they set the Champions League scoring record. I think so, yeah. Um, now a lot of that also. Now, now, hey, I mean, you think about it, they were putting they put five past Porto, I believe seven past City, seven past Roma. Mm-hmm. But you know, also when you look back at the group stage, they beat the dog shit out of some teams in the group stage. Uh, when you look at uh, the Maribor and uh, God, was it was it Kuska? I will look really quick. It was uh, it was one of the Russian teams. I can't remember who they all were. Boy, maybe it was Spartak. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. But um, they put up huge numbers in the championship. Really came together. Um, it was a Champions League final of, you know, what if. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, That's always going to be how we look back at that final, what if. You know, what if Sala doesn't get his fucking shoulder broken by the cock who will remain unnamed here, you know, doing a fucking MMA move. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what if the same cock doesn't later go down and carry us in the head and fucking concuss him? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then, of course, Gareth Bale has maybe one of the best Champions League final strikes you'll ever see. Um, so, you know, what if, but, yeah, I mean, shit, at the end of the day, if you had told us at the beginning of the season, you know, you're going to finish top four and you're, and you're going to make one of the more memorable Champions League final runs of all time, Brother, I'll take it every day. Uh, I thought it was a really good season for Liverpool. I'm going to give them an A as well. I was thinking A minus, but yeah, you kind of talked me into it, and I kind of talked myself into it. Uh, I thought it was a magnificent season. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, when you look at this team, and then obviously this isn't the preview, but when you look at what they've carried over into this off season and done, mm-hmm. I think we were seeing. The big, I think we're seeing Liverpool in their ascendancy mm-hmm. at this point. I think you're seeing an ascending Liverpool. It's going to be very exciting to watch them finish fifth this year. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> fuck you, man. Yeah. Damn you. Uh, that's because I'm picking them to win the league. That's why. Oh, Jesus Christ. Don't don't give it away. Don't, oh, don't, don't, don't give away the cow. Spoilers. Um, uh, a team I won't be picking to win the league, spoilers, um, is going to be our third place team from last year, and that is Tottenham Hotspur, uh, one place down from their finish a year ago, uh, but a second consecutive top three, or sorry, third consecutive top three finish for Maurizio Pochettino in his four years at the helm at Spurs. Uh, 77 points, 23 victories, um, 74 goals, 36 against. 
Um, some other, uh, not too many deep runs for this Tottenham team. Uh, they did make the FA Cup semifinals, uh, where they ended up losing uh, by a goal to Manchester United. Uh, they had the uh, the League Cup, where they went two and out. Um, and then, of course, the uh, the Champions League round of 16, um, where, where they had the heartbreaker at home to Juventus. Um, but, so th- those are kind of the negatives, I guess. Some of the positives, though. Winning the quote-unquote group of death that featured Real Madrid and Borussia Dortmund. Um, which I don't think many people would have picked at the beginning of the season. Um, especially, you know, I, I know a lot of people who didn't pick Tottenham to get out of the group. So to actually win the group, I think, was a tremendous accomplishment. Uh, still the only team that actually beat Real Madrid in the Champions League last year. Yay! Um, they uh, a, a fairly consistent Premier League season, not, not a, a tremendously hot start. Um, but once they hit about the midway point, they were on fire. Um, from December, uh, after December 14th, when they lost to Leicester, um, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, November 28th, when they lost to Leicester, uh, they lost three matches the rest of the season in the Premier League. Two of them were to Manchester City. Uh, one of them was a really weird game with West Brom, which was really weird at the end of the season. Um, but a very good team. Uh, they, they beat Arsenal at home. They beat Chelsea on the road, as we mentioned earlier, for the first time in 28 years. Uh, they beat United at home. Uh, they beat Liverpool at home. Um, a lot of really fun moments this year. Again, also, I would say both matches against Liverpool were, were great matches for Tottenham. Um their FA Cup run was great until until the very end. And again, the Champions League run, beating Real Madrid, and not just beating Real Madrid at home, but absolutely destroying them, except for a late Ronaldo junk, uh, garbage time goal. I mean, Tottenham just took Real Madrid to the woodshed at Wembley. And, um, and that's the last thing I'll say about them is Wembley was supposed to be, oh God, they're, how, how are they going to deal with it? They're, they're bad. They're, how, how, how are they going to deal with it? And they dealt with it just fine. Um, I, I, I expected slightly more from this Tottenham team. The, the Juventus loss hurt. But overall, there were still great uh, moments for this team. Harry Kane scored the most goals he ever has in a Premier League, and he just keeps getting better somehow. Um, I'm going to give this team a B+. Um, if they had, if they had managed to maybe make the round of eight or even the semifinals of the Champions League, or if they had managed to win the FA Cup, I would have bumped it up to the next letter grade. But I'm going to give them a super solid uh, B plus on the season. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur. That's that's their name. The team of Ed Green. Yeah. Um, Tottenham. Tottenham didn't have any any way of a bad season. I mean, there's no way to say it on earth they had a bad season. I think Tottenham had a lot of expectation going into this season. Mm-hmm. And I just I, I think um some injuries mm-hmm. derailed them a little bit. Um Deli Ali maybe having a little bit of a sophomore slump this year. Mm-hmm. Derailed it a little bit. Um and it just it, it's like they never got into they never got into the groove really it seemed like for them but also that i think a lot of teams feel like they never got into a groove and part of the reason was because there was no title race yeah that's true and i mean so really Tottenham didn't have any sort of a bad season it was just they kind of got caught with expectations and they were a little thin um of course, you know, sold Kyle Walker last summer. Um, and, and, you know, it's just there's some, something about Spurs right now. They, you know, Daniel Levy still doesn't want to spend any money. <laughs> we'll see. There's still a week left. <sighs> there is. There is. But, you know, it hasn't been an overly promising <laughs> we're getting, summer transfer. We're getting Martial. <laughs> that, haven't you heard? Eh, it, it would be nice. It would be nice. <laughs> Um, and Jesus, God, that's a story for right. <laughs> Jesus, that's a story. But, uh, and that would be a, that would be a really good sign. 
it's just the last few big signings just haven't worked out. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I thought I thought uh, Davinson Sanchez was very good for Tottenham. Well, now I don't I don't really now they paid decent money for Sanchez, but I'm not calling him like the big signing. Okay, I'm saying um, God, was it not? Oh, who is their big signing then? I'm... Jesus Christ, your midfielder, the uh, S- Sissoko. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, that, and that's the thing is, it's like Spurs have done really, really good bringing through players, mm-hmm. and that's big time. And, and that is how you, hey, you know, that as as Red Sox fans, you know, that's how you save money. You know, you don't have to spend big money if you bring them through from the time they're like 14, mm-hmm. you know, or you buy them when they're 18 and, you know, they turn into fantastic players. But I just, I, I think Spurs are just at that point where, it's like they just need that little extra oomph. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, it seems like to the outside world that they would have the money to go do it. Mm-hmm. But it's like Daniel Levy just doesn't want to do it. <laughs> and, you know, Pochettino kind of made a, a, a statement toward the end of the season saying, you know, I expect, I expect some things to happen this summer to help me. Mm-hmm. Is basically what he said. Like you say, you know, like you say, hey, if you get Marshall, that's going to be big. But we're just still kind of sitting here. Toby Alderweireld is still out there. Don't know what's going to happen with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, when you talk about injuries, that was one I think that hurt a lot this season was Alderweireld being hurt a lot. Yeah. Um, but I still just, I still just wonder if Spurs are. You know, it's almost like they're just trying to get by on this starting eleven, which is really, really, really top flight. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that hurt them this year was maybe a lack of options at times. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, that's that's just what I see Spurs. I just see them as a team that maybe the expectations were a little high for this year. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think I picked them to win it. <laughs> yes. And you know, it just um, you know, they didn't fail by any means, but they just. I think for Spurs, you know, now it's two straight seasons. You made the Champions League and finished the personal. That's great. But it just seems like it's time to do something next. Mm-hmm. You know, take that next. And we talked about during the season, you know, go win a trophy. Mm-hmm. And I thought they gave the FA Cup a hell of a run. Don't get me wrong. Just, they just got beat on the day. Mm-hmm. It wasn't because they sandbagged and held all their players, mm-hmm. which they've done before. Um, they just got beat on the day, and you know I thought that was a little disappointing for them because I wanted to see them make that run and win that trophy. And I just, I just really think that winning even a domestic, even a domestic trophy, something like that, winning that I think would just help justify this uh, this crop of players. Mm-hmm. I, so, I, uh, I, I'm gonna give them a B plus for the year, though. It wasn't a bad season; just it didn't. Mm-hmm. quite live up to, I think, what a lot of Spurs fans felt. Now, also part of that was having to play in Wembley all season. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going back home this year. Um, it's coming home. Yeah, it already did. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, you know, we'll see. Um, we'll see. Yeah, and I, I think one of the interesting things is, you know, we didn't, you know, we talk about the signings for this summer. I, I think one interesting thing to look out for, and it's a guy who's looked pretty good so far in in the tournament that shall not be named. Um, and that's and that's Lucas Mora, who came over in the middle of the season, didn't really play a whole lot, but now he's he's had a, he's had a half a season and now a summer under Pochettino. That's that's really what he wants is, is to get them in early and start working them in. He could be a guy that while not a Very summer much. signing, could be a guy that's gonna add to that depth uh, and, and, and give them some, some much needed ability to do like some rotations. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the other guys, you know, they, they've been trying a lot of the young kids. Now, part of that is because uh, half their starting 11 is, was on break uh, from their, their late run in the world cup because England was full of, of English of Tottenham players, as was the French goalie and a couple of Belgian guys. So, yeah. Yeah. so the young kids have been getting some, some chances to do things and, and, and really prove themselves. And that's mm-hmm. something Tottenham has tried to do is really 
build out from that that youth system. Now, that doesn't mean that you should solely rely on that and that you know you can't go out and make a, a big purchase. But again, it, it's just about depth. Because as I saw somebody say somewhere, for Tottenham to improve on, I would say, nine out of their 11 positions in the starting 11, mm-hmm. they'd, have to, they'd have to probably make a world record signing Absolutely. To, to improve. Yeah, so I mean, they'd, have to, they'd have to spend big. So that's, that, and that's not what they're looking to do. What, what they do, do need to do is, is just get a little bit of depth, you know, in, in the like defensive mid area and, and mm-hmm. in the center back position possibly. Right, but right. If, and if they do that, I think they'll be fine. Um, and I still like their chances going to next season. And again, like I said, with Mora getting more time with maybe a young guy like Juan Foyth, who, who has now mm-hmm. had an entire season at Spurs and train with them and working with them. Let's see if he takes the leap because Foyth is, uh, is, uh, is super, he's only 20 years old. He could be really good. Don't know, but he could be a guy that's really good going forward for Spurs. Now that he's been there for a year. So, uh, and also somebody like a Harry Winks, you know, coming back from injury. Yeah, so so there's, is, is obviously going to be a huge plug and play guy. Oh yeah, so there there are pieces, and that's why I'm not tooting this horn of we got to sign somebody. I would like us to get a little more depth, but I'm not like shouting it from the rooftops. I'm just quietly talking to Daniel Levy, and going, you know, we could we could use a few more uh, defensive hits. Just 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 saying, just just for backup, just. No, you never know. So I, I, I think that's that's where I kind of stand on that. But I, I do agree with you. Um, and I think another another big thing was um, making sure they retained Hung Min Son this summer. Yeah. You know, not not resisting the urge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we know Daniel Levy likes to you know add money to that wall. And that and that was resisting kind of... the urge. Go ahead. I think that was kind of you know another big thing. You know, just looking at their new contracts. Um, Davinson Sanchez got a new contract for his play this summer. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Cameron Carter Vickers, who was on loan all of last year, the American, he's mm-hmm. he got a new contract. Winks got a new contract. Pochettino got a new contract. Harry mm-hmm. Kane got a new contract. Uh, Sonny got a new contract. Eric Lamella got a new contract. Uh, there's been a lot of talk that Christian Eriksen very soon will be getting a new contract. So, no, those aren't new signings. But there is a commitment to spending money on the talent that is there to not just sell your best players. And you're absolutely right. And I mean, you know, when you think about it, that that's something that everyone's been predicting is going to happen to Spurs. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, you're going to sell. You know, Erickson will go to Barcelona, and Kane's going to go to Real Madrid, and Deli Ali go to Real Madrid, or you know, he'll, he'll end up at Manchester United. You know, uh, really, those are the biggest moves of the summer for Spurs. Mm-hmm. But it's just, and I kind of agree with you. I mean, the, I, they don't need starters. Mm-hmm. They need they need depth because we have seen when Spurs lose some key players, mm-hmm. that's when they suddenly struggle to score goals or um, or you know control midfield. Mm-hmm. I and I think that's where they that's where they need some help. Absolutely, and we'll, we have a week left to see if they actually do it. Um, and, and of course, I mean, we know somebody's got to score goals in August. <laughs> New August. <laughs> Come on, Erickson. Come on back. And now he hasn't even uh, Kane and that group. They haven't even gotten to camp yet, have they? No, uh, I think right. I, they, I, know, I know Trent just came in, and I think um, I don't think Jordan's coming back till Monday. So. I think they'll probably rejoin the team when they come back from, which I think they just yeah. got back from the states today uh-huh. so i think okay. at this point they'll probably rejoin them um, see we got we got uh we got back from the states over i think on sunday because mm-hmm. we're actually we've been in france for a few days mm-hmm. so yeah. um and, and that's where uh trent met up in france and mm-hmm. you know just uh, allison mm-hmm. got there allison's there this week and but they said uh they said jordan will be back next week mm-hmm. I think Trent came back a little early because, you know, obviously Trent didn't play nearly as much as Jordan did at the right. World Cup. So, you know, they're giving Jordan a little extra time. And... Well, de- well deserved. Yeah. Well deserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, speaking of a team that maybe isn't as comfortable with its starters or really anybody, apparently, um, 
that's oh, Jesus. that's that's talk for later. But uh, that brings us to our second place team from last year, and that is Manchester United. They finished four points ahead of Tottenham, nineteen points back of the leaders. Though um, Josie Mourinho's men uh, had a interesting season. Uh, they weren't able to really keep that much pressure on City. Did prevent them from winning the trophy against them. Uh, they did. So that hey, at least they got that. Uh, United also were, were kind of uh, shocked uh, out of the, uh, the Champions League. Um, did, did not able to... Uh, wait, where, where am I going with this? It was shit, this one. I believe it was. Why am I having so much trouble finding this, though? Um, they they because Josie's having all the records erased. <laughs> uh, they did make it to while we're talking about it though. They did make it to again the FA Cup final against Chelsea where they lost. Uh, they made it to the fifth round in the League Cup where they lost to Bristol City, and then uh, they did actually win their Champions League group. Uh, but they lost in the round of sixteen to Sevilla. Um, Sevilla, Sevilla. I'm sorry. Yeah. Where they 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 won the uh they they drew in the away leg nil nil and then lost. At home, two one on on two very late goals, um, just a very very tough result. A, a team that you know, when we were looking at, you know, the English teams going in to that uh, that that round of sixteen, it was like, well, Liverpool had like Porto, and like well, they should probably get past Porto, and City had whatever crappy club they had, and they should get past them. And then it's like, mm-hmm. well, Chelsea and Spurs have Juventus and Barcelona. Don't know about yeah. that. And then United was like, Sevilla could maybe go either way, but United should win. Yeah, United will take care of that. And then they didn't. Um, So a a very rough season. Again, a very inconsistent season. Um, I don't, you know, we we, we saw this thing where uh, um, Romelu Lukaku comes in, kind of replaces Latan Ibrahimovic, who was was Not as well by any means. Of course not, um, but also kind of replaced Marcus Rashford, which still is a little confusing. Um, Martial was very sidelined a lot. Paul Pogba had a very Pogba-ish season, which was very up and down. Um, and again, moments United, of bri- moments of brilliance surrounded by malevolence. Yeah, um, and again, United started off hot, uh, didn't lose until their ninth match of the season against Huddersfield. Um, and, you know, we thought it was going to be a, a two-horse race with them and City for a lot of the season, but then they just fell off and City didn't. I, it, it's very tough when I judge everything because they're, they're kind of like Tottenham. They, they made some deep runs. They made it to the round of 16 in the Champions League, and they finished above Tottenham in the table. But I also feel like United overall should have been better. They brought in Alexis Sanchez. He didn't really seem to fit in with what Mourinho wanted to do. So that move didn't really look like it worked out very well. I'm, I'm going to give them a B. I kind of want to give them a B minus, but I think that's a little harsh. I'm going to give them a B. I feel like you're going to go much worse than that. I'm, (laughs) I'm going to give them a B. It was there. They were, I mean, they finished second in a very tough premier league and that is to be commended. And they made it to the final of the FA Cup. That is not bad. Um, I, you know what? No, okay. I'm going to give them a B minus. I'm changing it. B minus. <laughs> That's what I, I talked myself into it. A B minus for Manchester United West. God, as I look at Josie's sour puss face right in front of me right now. Of oh. course, folks. Match of the night. <laughs> so I didn't get the chance to watch it because I had to work. Uh, we're watching Liverpool Man United at in front of 101,000 people at Michigan Stadium at the Big House. <laughs> Be the most exciting football I see all year. <laughs> <laughs> suck it, Harbaugh. Um, I don't really dislike Jim Harbaugh. I just want to say suck it, Harbaugh. Um, the story of United this season was, was turmoil. And that's crazy to think about a team that finished second in the league, got to the FA Cup final. But, I mean, it was. It, it was. When you look back on this season as a United fan, no one's excited that, oh, man, we finished second. Oh, man, we got the FA Cup out. No one's excited about that. There was such this, like, 
dark cloud over the season just because that's that's the Mourinho way. <laughs> you know, um, it wasn't just that City were just better overall, as they just were to everybody. Mm-hmm. And City, we'll get to them, obviously, if you've been there, just a freaking juggernaut this year. Everybody, after, I mean, by October, everybody was playing for second. And yeah, United, I guess, won that. But when you look back at it, it was depressing football to say. I mean, that's to say the least. It was depressing. It was depressing for the neutrals. You know, it it was ultra depressing for United fans to have to watch. And especially when you look at that team and you're like, God, we've got this guy and this guy and this. Why do we play like we're fucking Burnley? You know, why do we play like we're Burnley? We're Manchester United. And um, yeah, at the end of the year, yeah, they finish second. You know, they get the FA Cup final. They don't win anything, though. And that's always kind of been Mourinho could always, even from the year before, hang his hat on that. Like, well, you know what? Yeah, we have a great year, but I won trophies. I mean, you know, two years ago, he wins Europa. He wins the FA Cup. FA Cup, he wins Europa League. And then he comes in this year, and they were a better, they were a better Premier League team. Mm-hmm. A lot of that once again comes down to they had a really hot start, but um, it was just, it was a dull, somewhat painful year to watch on United because it was like nothing ever clicked into place for them. They were always United as a team should be a Mercedes. Mm-hmm. And it's like they just got stuck in second gear all year and looked more like a sob. Yeah. Nothing against a good sob, but, you know, a sob ain't a Benz. It's true. Um, it has obviously <laughs> gone off the rails this summer. <laughs> yeah. This summer's been magnificent for United haters. Um, I mean, everything has just exploded and gone off the rails. But, you know, I can't give them anything above a C plus. Okay. Because, once again, there, there are expectations. When you field a roster and you field a team that Manchester United has, and your manager is Josie Mourinho, there are, there are just bigger expectations, and they didn't live up to any of them. Mm-hmm. And not only that, once again, the football is shit. And on top of that, basically by the end of the year, Mourinho's blame is is playing his blame game, where you know it's it's almost like as a United supporter, I've got to believe that every time there was some sort of breaking news, Manchester United, it was like, oh shit, what's he done now? <laughs> oh God, what now? Oh God, you know it's like you're 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 getting ready for the big hit to come. You know what? Oh God. You know, for you know, they they go out and they get Alexis Sanchez, which is you know on paper that's a great signing in January, but then you're kind of looking around and you're like, okay, why, why did we need Alexis Sanchez? So bad? Yeah. <laughs> why are we paying this guy half a million, half a billion, or whatever, you know, a half a million pounds a week? Why? And then he doesn't come in, he doesn't do great in a lot because you know he's stifled by the system. You know, all the all these damn world-class talents who, when they go away, seem to do great. But then when they're playing for Josie, it's just, uh, eh, you know, that, that defense is – defensively, they the numbers weren't bad this year, especially with, you know, what I still say is the best goalkeeper in the world <laughs> in David De Gea. Yeah. I mean, he, he saved them once again so many times this year. Um. But they they need a defensive. It's it hasn't happened. Josie's been pumping money into that defense. It hasn't gotten better. And I guess if we talk about it a little more later, we'll talk about the of Mourinho this summer. But I think the way the season went has kind of walked right into the summer, and just kind of like ratcheted the fire up a little more. Mm-hmm. You know, C plus, yeah, they finished second. They got to an FA Cup final. But, you know, they were favorites in the FA Cup final. 
you know, they lost to Bristol City in the League Cup. They lost the, you know, basically all every competition they were not out of, they were favored to win. Yeah, uh, they were favored in the match or in the tie that they that they they were favored in the draw that they had, mm-hmm. and they lost. Yeah, and that's that's disappointing. You know, for Liverpool, I mean, hey, you know, we we lost the Champions League final, but we lost for your Real Madrid. Right. You know, I mean, there's no shame in going out to Real Madrid. You know, there's there's some when you're Man United and it's Sevilla, did you say uh, Bristol City, mm-hmm. and and yes Chelsea, but you know it's a Chelsea team that was a grease fire at that point. Yeah. So uh, disappointing season for United. I, I don't know this ooh, this season is going to be something coming up. It's uh, it's going to be spicy. I think is the uh is the way we would call that. Um, Spicy. Yeah, all. it's uh, a lot of stuff to work out for United this upcoming yeah. season. Who knows who's going to be there? I mean, Mourinho doesn't even like his team. Um, oh, no, he hates it, apparently. <laughs> um, well, then we have to go to the other side of Manchester to finish up our retrospective, um, and that is Manchester City. The title winners, the Centurions, as they have been called, 100 points on the season. Uh, they not only won the league, but they also won the League Cup. They did the domestic double. Um, they did not win the FA Cup. Uh, they got knocked out, actually, I believe, in the round of eight, as I'm looking it up right mm-hmm. I believe now. believe you're right. Uh, the fifth Before you round, look, I believe you. Fifth round, which um, I want to actually say that's the round of 16, is the, mm-hmm. uh, is the fifth round. Um, I want to look it up real quick here. Uh, third round, fourth round, fifth round. Yeah, fifth round is the round of 16. So they lost in the round of 16 of the FA Cup to Wigan because apparently that's the only team that can beat them in the FA Cup. Um, again, won the League Cup against Arsenal <laughs> and then uh, ran uh, rush shot through the group stage of the Champions League, uh, beat Basel, uh, and then just got hit by their literal direct counter for this season in yeah. Liverpool in the quarterfinals. Um I might catch a lot of shit for this. Hmm. I'm going to give them an A. Hmm. I'm not going to give them an A+. Plus. Mm-hmm. And that's because... Wow, and literally... Well, and it's because, of course, we're we're talking about your entire body of work, not yes. just Premier League. Yeah. Which, in the Premier League, they're an absolute A+. Yes, yes. If, if we just went by their Premier League season, it would be an A+. Plus. I'm going to give them an A because if you had told a Manchester City fan in the middle of January you're only winning two trophies this year, I think they'd be sort of shocked. Because at that point, I believe they're in either the semifinals or finals of the League Cup. And they're in the round of 16 getting ready to face Wigan for the FA Cup. That looks all of a sudden like at least round of eight, if not an entire run through. And you're storming through the Champions League and you're storming through the Premier League. Yeah. They had a a legitimate chance at a triple and maybe could have even gotten a quadruple. They were talking quadruple in January. So I think when we start looking at it like that, I, I have to say they fell just a little bit short. And and also the way they lost Liverpool. If they had lost on a 180th minute Mo Salah wonder strike. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would be like, okay, you know, that's that's just two teams who were really good just going at it in hard nosed football and one team mm-hmm. was just a little better. No, City had l- no answer. Guardiola had no answer for Liverpool. And at the end of the day, Guardiola was brought in to win the Champions League. City's mm-hmm. won the Premier League. Not in this fashion. And that's why I gave him an A, because that was an amazing Premier League season. He uh-huh. was brought in to win City a Champions League, and he didn't do it. And he lost in a round of eight badly to a Premier League club who finished about 25 points below them. That's that's why I don't give you the A+. Plus. So there you go, City. I'm giving you the A. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to go with the A as well. Even, you know, like we said, it's, it's the entire body of work. Mm-hmm. And... You know, unfortunately for City, I mean, this is a team, even going out of the league, this is a team that should have won a treble. Yeah. Um, 
you know, but they they played down to Wigan on that day, mm-hmm. and they got themselves caught. And I mean, at the end of the day, yes, you know, uh, the the Centurions, the only team that's ever done that. My God, they might be the only team that ever does it. Yeah. I mean, I just I can't see anyone else doing what they did in the league again, um, in the Premier League anyway. France have at it, whatever. But, um, you know, to then go and win the League Cup, and at that point, you know, they're just looking like unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And to me, just that Wigan loss, that FA Cup loss sticks out more to me than even the Liverpool loss. Mm-hmm. In the Champions League, they just hit – they hit an absolute buzzsaw. When they came to Anfield, that was a buzzsaw. Liverpool were firing on every cylinder at that point. Um, they were – Liverpool were just built and ready to kick the shit out of City. Mm-hmm. And that's what they did. They they, they slaughtered them. They, they played maybe – 70 of the, I mean, people are saying that was 70 to 80 of the best minutes of football you'll ever see at Anfield. Oh, yeah. Um, they do get the two late goals, which kind of keeps the tie alive. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was, it was five, it was five mil. I mean, Liverpool were beating them just, you know, Liverpool were beating them like a minnow. And they get the two late goals, and then they get the early goal uh, back at, um, at the uh, Eddie Head. But, you know, after that, you know, because you and I, we watched the match together. And I think you looked at me at halftime and I said that you said, everything's fine. Don't worry. We're fine. <laughs> and we were. I mean, it was just, it was one of those, you know, Liverpool came out and just established themselves in the second half and City had no answer. What you do get from Pep Guardiola from time to time, and we, you know, I think that we, um, we give Pet maybe a little more shit than we should. Yeah. Sometimes we give Pet the same shit that we give, like, you know, Arsene Wenger or somebody like that. And Pep's not anywhere near that bad of a class. Pep just kind of has a habit of having these dominant squads that will fall a little short when the big games show up. Um, And for City, that was just what it was. You know, they just... They had the world in their hands and kind of were like, eh. and it's like they took their eye off the ball a few times. Yeah. And it wasn't often. Um, I think they lose two Premier League matches this year. Uh, or was Liverpool the only one? I was saying, oh, no, well, United beat yeah. them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was those two losses. Um, you know, that United loss took a little bit of shine off just because. You know, it was all built up to win it against their most hated rivals and, you know, all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, end of the day, I mean, you cannot take away what they did. I mean, it was an absolutely incredible run for City. Um, Like I said, though, coming up short, really that FA Cup. And then you almost think what would have happened if they had gotten past Liverpool. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it really it – was, it was a special season for City. Yeah. It could have been a legendary season in Europe. Oh, yeah. And, and it's just one of those, well, we'll never know. Um, I don't think you're going to see 100 points again this year. No. We'll talk about this, obviously, more in our preview. But, uh, you know, I, I could actually see City full on, falling back to the pack some because I do think that they're going to put their eggs in that Champions League basket this year. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, that is what Pep was brought in to do. You know, hey, okay, we set the Premier League record. Cool, we've done it. You've done what you can now in the Premier League. There's really nothing left to win in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. They brought you in to make them a European powerhouse. So, uh, time to step up on that. But, I mean, great, memorable season for City. Um, we'll talk about it for years to come. Could have been better. I'll give him an A. There you go. So that's that's gonna finally do it for the for the 2017-18 Premier League season. We did it. We did it, guys. We finally did it. Um, quick preview next week because I don't think you'll be alive next week, so you'll be. Uh, I won't, unfortunately. But I'm gonna. I don't know. We're gonna figure something out. I'll send something in if I have to. Yeah, but uh, send in some picks. 
I'll send something in, but or you know maybe we'll figure something out. But whatever, we'll do something. We'll definitely have you some preview next week. Of course we will. Uh, speaking of of, of uh, previews of the upcoming season, um, when last we we talked last week, uh, Everton was laughed at a lot as we transition into news and notes. Uh, <laughs> that's our only ever uh, news for this week. Uh, one of the men who was brought in last season on uh, on big money. And basically did nothing. The Davy Clausen, he has uh, left Everton and is now signed with Werder Bremen uh, for twelve million pounds. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's a very good um, uh, buyback for for Everton. I don't believe they made much on there. Uh, no, they lost about half that fee. <laughs> I don't. I do believe uh, that hasn't apparently uh, dissuaded them from spending more money. Because they signed uh, Lucas Thigne uh, from Barcelona on a five-year contract. They finally signed somebody this summer. So, um, we, we'll see. Uh, they, the Everton, no stranger from, from bringing in little-used Barcelona guys like Gerard de la Feu. Um So, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you want to uh, you know, you know my favorite thing about Lucas Thigne? And this that? is suddenly now making his round-around uh, What's that? With with Liverpool fans getting just one more nice little jolt in. Lucas Digne, as as many of our Europe players now uh, enjoys the tattoo parlor, mm-hmm. head in big letters across his chest, is tattooed the words "You'll never walk alone." Oh no! <laughs> oh, it's magnificent. You and you know you, you know Liverpool. Anything they don't complain about that now, would we? Oh no, we wouldn't point that out at every opportunity, would we? Of course not. They, you guys, have way too much respect to do that. Yes, we have way too much love and empathy for her nature. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. So. Ah. Uh, well. Good. Good for you, dude. Good for it's you. Everton. That, that is actually Everton. And that's news and notes for the week. Um, light light week this week. Not actually that much uh, transfer happening. Still waiting for that last week of transfers. Um, that that deadline will be next. And, of course, definitely no happening with Manchester United. Josie yeah. has bitched and moaned all week. Do you want to just talk about that a little bit? I, I yes, have to I do. Me. That needs to be talked about because that has been that's been pretty much the biggest story I, oh, didn't, I didn't have any news notes because it's not like about an actual sign or anything. But please, you 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 have been chomping at the bit all podcast. I'm just gonna let you have this time to talk about Josie. I think Josie's trying to get fired. <laughs> oh, mm. okay. I really do. I mean, okay. So here's the deal. Here's here's kind of where everything comes. Let's ignore the fact that Josie spent over four hundred million dollars. On players since coming to United, <laughs> Josie doesn't get any money, according to him. Um, Mourinho has stated that he gave a list to Ed Woodward of five to six players that he wanted this summer. So far, he's gotten one of those players, that being Fred. Uh, he knows he's not going to get the ones he wants. He may get another one in. He's hoping he'll get at least one, maybe two more in. But um, Josie's feeling a little neglected. Josie's feeling like, you know, they're not giving him the tool to succeed. Oh, no. Once again, $400 million over, you know, since he's been there. You know, gave him the world record signing at the time in Paul Pop. Uh, but he's he's not getting what he needs. Uh, there's thought that United, the United front office is, their thinking is, you know, we spent all this money and, you know, a lot of these guys you brought in have kind of been shitty. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to give you the money to get whatever you want. Um, on the other hand, you know, there's, there's Josie saying, well, if you don't give me the, then how can I give you the squad that you want? Fair enough. But of course, Josie's taking it to the next level because he's Josie and went on an epic rant in the U.S. about how, you know, you can't judge anything that he's got because his team's not there. This isn't the team that he's going to play this year, which is obvious. Um, 
you know, he had a lot of guys at the World Cup who went. But in the things he's saying, he has completely, I mean, if you're a young player for Josie Mourinho, right? Mm -hmm. What gives you any hope that you're ever going to play for Manchester United? Because your manager just completely chucked you under the bus. Yeah. He talked about how horrible a summer it's had to be because he doesn't have his, he doesn't have his main players. And he's had to work with these, you know, he's Clint Eastwood, get off my damn lawn, kids. He's had to work with these damn kids, basically. And uh, how can anyone do this to a manager of his stature? Now, Josie has just gone off. Um, Jurgen, you know, he, of course, as soon as Jurgen Klopp signed Allison, that got Mourinho talking because, you know, it gave him someone. Uh, Klopp, had, Klopp had maybe the most epic bike drop. Yeah, I, I loved it. I, I literally laughed for about two minutes when I read it, where someone said, you know, what, what's your ultimate goal for Jose Mourinho? He said, I just want to make Josie smile. <laughs> <laughs> and I absolutely, he said, I just, I just want Josie to smile. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, but Mourinho's gone on this little warpath saying, you know, oh, well, you know, you, you must put the pressure on Liverpool that they have to win this year because they spent money. And you do it to me when I spend money. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's so damn eye-rolling what yeah. this guy does. Um, there is obviously an issue with him and Paul Pogba. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think Pogba would leave tomorrow if given a couple of choices. But United, the club, they're not selling Paul Pogba. Why the hell would they? The guy just came off being a superstar at the World Cup. No, they're looking to cash in on Pogba. You know, they're looking to make their money in advertising in, you know, all the, uh, the corporate ways with Pogba. Why are they going to sell him right now? Why are they going to sell him when they don't know how much more they pay for him now than what they paid for him? You know, they're, they're not going to. And, I mean, that's going to be an on That's going to be a saga this year because I just don't think Mourinho is going to give Pogba the freedom that he wants. He wants him to defend. Papa doesn't want to defend. Um, this whole Martial issue. Oh, my God. Can you look like more of a petty asshole? <laughs> and the thing is, you know, you look at Liverpool. Literally, you look at the two teams that I'm watching play. As this was happening, um, two players, pretty much the exact same issue. Here's how it's handled differently. Martial's partner is having a child. Nathaniel Klein's partner is having a child. Martial says, I'd like to go home and see the birth of my child. Nathaniel Klein, Jurgen Klopp says, hey, you're going home to see your child be born. <laughs> now he asked him and Klopp's like, God, absolutely. Yes. Get on the plane. Go home now. We'll see you in France. Martial is now getting fined for not being back at camp. <laughs> um, so, I mean, two different and, – and, and, of course, both have played out in the media because it's preseason and everyone's looking at the story. Of course. So you've got literally two guys sitting here. One is telling, oh, man, go home. Yeah, be with your wife. Be with your new child because that's what's the most important thing in life. And the other one's like, no, I need you here in America to play a game that means nothing. And you can just see your child some other time. I mean, the court of public opinion is – Quickly, quickly convicting Josie Mourinho. Um, Mourinho is becoming more and more of a sourpuss by the day. He complains more by the day. Uh, he has been installed as the leading candidate to be fired first this year, which, I mean, you know, that's usually an Alan Pardue or Sam Allardyce kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we know it's not past Mourinho to itch to get himself fired. Oh, yeah. We know that. I mean, we watched it happen at Chelsea. <laughs> we watched it happen in front of our eyes. Um, I don't know, man. Mourinho, it's just it, it is a it is a tough situation right now. I don't see how it's going to be resolved because I mean, there it, you've got too many headstrong people in this. You know, Ed Woodward is a disaster as a director. Yeah. It, well, I mean, when it comes to putting a product. On, um, they're not giving Mourinho what he wants. Mourinho, this is year three. This is usually when he likes to blow things up anyway. I mean, it's just, it has, 
he has all the makings of man. Josie's gonna blow this shit up this year. So I think Josie's gonna blow this shit up this year. It's and, the third um, year, man. Yeah, it's year three. He's got the three year itch. The thing with Mourinho is, you know, I don't know where he goes next. You know, there's always been these clubs. Well, he go back to Chelsea. He ain't going back to Chelsea. No. It's like, well, you know, Alex Ferguson always wanted to come to United. Done that. He ain't going to City after Guardiola. He sure as hell ain't coming to Liverpool. <laughs> um, you know, I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know what Josie's in his mind, but it is, I mean, it, for, for a Mourinho hater and a United hater like myself and many others, this is high, high comedy. I mean, that's, that's, that's the it's great thing, man. <laughs> that's the great thing about Josie. It's like, when things are going well, as long as he's not beating your club, he's great for quotes. And when things aren't going well, he's still great for quotes. It's uh, it's just amazing. It's really and truly amazing. And as I say, it's, Josie, it's almost like a mysterious logo. Oh, the most mysterious. Um, don't ever change, Josie. I say it all the time. Don't ever change. Um. <laughs> That, that's going to bring us to uh, the Watch 4. Wes, uh, what are you watching in the week that was or the week that will be? Oh, watch this week. God, it, it's been a work week, so, you know, I didn't get much in. Mm-hmm. Um, trial and Error is back on NBC this year. I heard that. <laughs> I, just, I enjoy that show. I miss John Lithgow, but this year it's Kristen Chenoweth, mm-hmm. who brings, like, her own brand of psychotic craziness. <laughs> <laughs> to everything, and uh, I've just I've I've really enjoyed it this year again. Uh, yeah, I've I've enjoyed it. Uh, I'm caught up. It's four episodes in at this point, so I am caught up on that. It's been uh, it's been really fun. Um, not so much something I watch, but about entertainment. About my movie pass a little bit on here. You know how much I've been going to see the movies lately. Um, you know, I pay my nine ninety nine a month, and uh, you know, go go see my movie once, and everything's cool. Mm-hmm. Apparently, everything's not cool. It's very not cool. <laughs> they are basically um, dead. Yeah, I don't know how much longer I'm going to have my good old movie. <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed it, but you know, the one I've been waiting to see was the new Mission Impossible. Oh, and apparently, no. I can't go see that. Oh no. Um, I've still got a few movies. Yeah, I can go see. I think Skyscraper. A couple movies on there I can go see. But uh, yeah, it has not been a good week for Movie Pass. Uh, they took out a loan, and whew, I mean, it's it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic like model when you think about it as a consumer. I just can't understand how the hell you make money on this thing. <laughs> I mean, they're they're basically buying my movie ticket for me. I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I paid ten bucks a month last month. I saw like seven movies. Mm-hmm. Trust me, I would not have gone to see seven movies if I didn't have the movie. Pass. <laughs> but they paid for the tickets, and I paid them ten bucks. So, uh, you know, if it's if it's coming to an end, which it kind of sounds like it is, man, it's been a hell of a run. I wish I found this thing earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I found a lot earlier, but uh, you know that's that's kind of been something in the entertainment news this week. Oh yeah, uh, has been that. So we'll see what the future of Movie Pass brings. But um, I need to try to see what I can see before it, before they shut it down. So uh, anyway, that that was kind of my watch for this week: trial and error and future of Movie Pass. Um. I my I, I did I did the Octopath Travelers last week the, the Nintendo Switch game. Um, I, I've been playing a new game this week a couple times trying it out. It's a free to play game. It's called Paladins. It's like a knockoff Overwatch. Which, by the way, congratulations to the London Spitfire for winning the first season of Overwatch, which was aired live on ESPN. So, we, your favorite channel. We esports now, baby. It's you can't escape it anymore. Um, so that was- I, I, I do, I do love and laugh. At, you know, when it comes to esports, ESPN. When it comes to everything else, 
ESPN. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ESPN, leading the esports revolution. I do um, enjoy that about you. Oh, it's oh, they did a really good job. I was I was impressed they actually put Overwatch on the main ESPN channel. It was great. I was actually um traveling this past weekend when it was on, and I was in a hotel on Friday night, and I was the only one in the the restaurant eating. And there was like three TVs with ESPN on, and nobody had bothered to change it. So no one, no one realized. I got to watch. Anything else was I will say, I was the semifinals were also on ES. They were on ESPN News, and uh, one name producer Jackie and I were uh, there two weeks ago when the semifinals were on. We were at a Carolina Ale House here in uh, in Cary, North Carolina. Um, we were having dinner one night, and the semifinals were on ESPN News. And so I very discreetly asked one of the waitresses, would you mind changing it to ESPN News? And they were like, yeah, sure, that, that should be fine. And oh, so sure. they put it on one of the big projectors. And about 10 minutes later, they changed it off back. Yeah. I was like, damn it. <laughs> we, for a second there, we were in yeah, you flew. You flew too close to the did. Oh, man, it was great. Uh, but yeah, esports is is really starting to be the thing. So anyway, I played Paladins. It's a knockoff Overwatch. It's all right, whatever. Um, but I also played tonight before we came on because it's been sitting on my Nintendo Switch for about almost a month now, um, and I just haven't played it because I don't hate myself enough. I play. I played the Fortnite, Wes. I played, oh, I finally tried it. I was like, all right, let's. I I got twenty minutes before we pod. Let's do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try the Fortnite. I'm gonna see what's Ed, what's your username? The boys always look at friends on It's hybrid H Y G H B R Y D. Hybrid. Yeah, I don't remember anything that's you just fine. said. That's fine. fine. Um yeah, that's um that's a video game. That's um that's uh yeah. It's good good for you. Again, epic epic games. I can probably hit a driver to their offices from my apartment. But, you know, just, eh, whatever. So, that's that's my watch for. I watched Fortnite. I played Fortnite. I might not ever actually play it again. So. Uh, but Wes Bradshaw, as I, as I look on Twitter, and I see the Sultan of Sit, a.k.a. the Shogun of the Road, a.k.a. Brennan Williams, Posting memes on Twitter, I like the anime and video game lover that he is. I think that's the perfect transition as we try to get a little so wrong. Oh my gracious! I'm about to get so wrong these dogs down here because they're suddenly wanting to be gigantic pains in the ass. Oh no! Anyway, it um Raw Raw was decent this week. Had some good matches. Um, Rollins, Drew McIntyre. Rollins Drew McIntyre was really good. That was a really good match. Uh, Jinder Mahal and uh, Braun Strowman was a good match, kind of building toward the SummerSlam theme um, for Strowman as he takes on Kevin Owens. Um, we had some good stuff, but Ed, Raw was Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman this week. And reading a magazine. Oh, my gracious. The underlying theme of Raw was Brock Lesnar showed up. And, and that was all he was going to do. He was just he was just going to show up. Why is That's Brock Lesnar reading gigantic asses? Why? Why is that what the internet's telling me he did? I don't think no. He was reading like hunting magazines. <laughs> there's Damn there's man. go just go on the internet. There's a lot of photoshops of different magazines Brock Lesnar read. Exactly. He was reading hunting magazines. Any gigantic asses. Um. Brock Lesnar, this is this is WWE's latest attempt, of course, to get Roman Reigns over. <laughs> because that's what everything apparently is for, is just to get Reigns over. Um, they are almost succeeding right now with turning people to Roman away from Lesnar. <laughs> Brock Lesnar, it's been building up. People are pissed because he never shows up to Raw. Yeah. And is the champion and never shuts up. Or, I'm sorry, never shows up. Never shuts up is the child behind me who won't be quiet. Even though she should have been in bed an hour ago. Anyway. Um, so Lesnar finally shows up. After being, you know, advertised, he finally shows up this week. 
but then he says that um you know he's not gonna bother going out. He he showed up. That was all he could actually had to do. He's not gonna bother going out and having to deal with the crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh well Paul Heyman's like, well, hey Brock, you know, whatever, man, you're the man. Paul Heyman had already cut a promo. He and Reigns had had a good start raw. Um, so you know, Paul's like, hey, whatever, you're the champ, man, you do you. Uh, but then Kurt Angle gets hold of Paul, and this kind of goes on throughout the show. And he says, "Look, here's the deal: if your client doesn't come out to the ring tonight, your contract is going to be terminated with WWE." Oh, no. So basically, Paul Heyman's going to lose his job if Brock come out. So then the night kind of turns into little segments of Paul trying to get Brock Lesnar to go to the ring without telling him that you know it, I'm going to get fired if this doesn't happen. Um. So finally, um, the last, uh, you know, the last uh, segment of the show, uh, Kurt Angle comes out, calls Paul Paul Heyman to the ring, says, "All right, is he coming or not?" Um, and Heyman comes out, and he's like, Heyman's all upset and says, "Well, he's he's not coming out." Uh, Heyman is trying to, you know, trying to suck up the Angle, try to keep his job. And Angle finally gets sick of it and starts to fire Paul Heyman while he's doing it. Brock Lesnar's music hits. Of course, you know Paul Heyman's like, "Oh, thank God!" You know, you <laughs> saved my job. Uh, and p- as he's coming out, people are booing the shit out of him. So you know, it's working. He looks at Kurt Angle. He says to me, "If you got a problem," and then he and Angle get face to face, and next thing you know, Brock. Brock drops Kurt Angle with an F5. Um, Paul Heyman's just laughing, just enjoying everything. And thinking, oh, you know, whatever, everything. Cool. And then all of a sudden, you know, Brock just kind of looks at Heyman, and you kind of get this finger like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then they see, you know, he F5s Paul Heyman. Now, this is Paul Heyman, who has been completely synonymous with Brock Lesnar, like, forever now in WWE. I mean, this is, you know, Heyman, because Lesnar can't cut a damn promo. It's true. So Heyman does it for him. And now he's basically beat the shit out of Heyman. And, I mean, this, it it was crazy, man. It was crazy. So, uh. You know, where does this leave us going forward now? You know, a lot of people feel Brody said, Brock fight a UFC match. He's most likely going to fight Daniel Cormier coming up in uh, sometime before the end of the year. And that is a huge money UFC fight right now is Cormier versus Lesnar. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Brock is going to go the two-sport way. I don't know what Brock's going to do. And, I mean, is this the way to kind of, you know, let him ride off in the sunset or what? I mean, I have no idea what's going to happen here. There's there's so many questions around Brock Lesnar and around the Universal title. You know, this is why people thought it was going to come to WrestleMania, and it didn't. I mean, this is just, this is like the next chance to do it. Um, now, don't forget, of course, Braun Strowman sitting there holding the money in the back, you know, briefcase. And Braun Strowman's obviously the most dangerous guy in WWE. Yeah. But I mean, there's so many questions around this, and this is a turn. It seems like it seems like this is the time for him to lose. Now the thing is, then if he loses it to Reigns, people are going to be happy it's off him, but people are going to be pissed that Reigns has it. Yeah. So. I don't know, man. I, I really, I really don't know. What's, I don't know where they're going with it. What's going to happen here? So at least you know they've got that going where it's not predictable. Um, SmackDown. I'm not going to lie. I haven't had a chance to watch SmackDown yet. Uh, it was a work week for me at night. Um, I do know that uh, they've they've turned the women's title match into a triple threat match. Charlotte Flair's back. Ooh. She's been added to the uh, women's title match, so it's a triple threat now. Um, other than that, man, I really don't know what happened. Wait. 
So I still plan to watch it. I just haven't got to it yet. I'm sorry about that, everybody. But um, Raw, I thought Raw was an up this week. Good. And I heard SmackDown was good. So, you know, hopefully they're getting this ramp up for SummerSlam. Where we're still pushing Dean Ambrose just to come back. So, uh, anyway, that was so Raw for the week. Let's, man, let's just see what the heck happens. It's it's a lot going on. It's a lot of storylines. Don't fuck it up, WWE. Don't fuck it up. Yeah, um, anybody can do it. It's Josie Mourinho. So as we <laughs> as we end this episode of the podcast, I uh, want to give one more shout to everybody. Uh, NGSC Sports, they're presenting this. NGSC Sports, we never stop. Uh, you can find them on Twitter, is a collective. You can also find us on Twitter. We are at AFA Pod. Wes, you are? Well, I'm at West Branch All 21. I am at Edward Green. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube via our parent show, The All New Sports Show. You can also find this. Uh, you can also email us that address, All New Sports Show at gmail.com. Thanks to all our podcast providers, including Podbean.com, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, the TuneIn Radio app, Google Play Music, and the iTunes Music Store. Uh, so we will be back next week. Um, Wes will be uh, plausibly live. Uh, with his picks for the Premier League season coming up. I will have my picks for the Premier League season um, coming up. And then football's back. S- such a long, boring God. summer without it. Seriously, I've been dying from lack of football. Oh, man. So uh, that's schedule for going forward. And then, of course, the week after that, we'll be back together uh, to recap the first week of football uh, that takes place that weekend again it will get started uh on friday um next friday with uh leicester versus manchester united friday night football baby um but that's next week um that uh that's gonna do it for the end of this week's episode but before we get out of here wes is there anything else you'd like to mention uh two quick things just want to throw in obviously extremely early preliminary stages Mm -hmm. uh the england fa is looking to make a bid to host the 2030 world cup it's coming home, Wes. Oh, my gosh. That'd be awesome. That would be great. If we had USA and England in battle. Oh, wow. Those would be great. So, since that would be so great, I'm sure it won't happen. Um, the other thing, just, to, you know, we talk about the football being back. College football is coming quick. Yeah. Folks, August means college football starting. You know, end of the month, we're going to have it. And what, you know, it just wouldn't be a day without a controversy and a scandal at the, the Ohio State University, Ed Green. Take no pleasure in it. Oh, God. You think I take pleasure in Mourinho having shit? (laughs) Oh, God. Uh, Urban Meyer is basically a college football version of Mourinho to me. So, um, apparent cover up of uh, domestic violence on his staff. Yeah, that's pretty. pretty um, Jesus, he is. Uh, he has been placed on. Now, this is the greatest thing ever. I, I've somehow got to get a job that will give me paid administrative leave. Mm-hmm. You know, when West fucks up and gets suspended from his job, you know what? He don't get no check from it. Yeah, he don't get no money. You know, Urban Meyer can still sit back and collect his millions, millions of dollars he gets a year. You know, while being on paid administrative leave. Yeah. But uh, not not what Ohio State wanted, especially at the beginning of August uh, with the season right around the corner. You know, they're primed to have a big season themselves. Couldn't have it a nicer bunch of guys. But, yeah, I can't say an Urban Meyer. So, I'm, uh, you know, Mourinho's got me gigging, giving the giggles, and now Urban Meyer's got me getting the giggles. Good job, Urban. Good job. And the Red Sox are still the best team in baseball. Hell, yeah, they are. Hells yeah, we are. Mookie Betts taking them to the chip. All right. Mookie! So that's going to do it for the uh, Foreign Affair Podcast, episode 221 from a Call and Crime West Bradshaw. I'm Edward Green. Thank you so much for joining us. We will catch you guys again next week. And until then, stay safe and enjoy this brief, brief, brief week with no football. Because from here on out, it's all football all the time, except for the international break. And good night, Evie and France. Mm. Home of Liverpool's uh, French uh, camp. Mm. Makes me thirsty. You guys are getting to see Evian. It's like Evian, like the the water. I guess that's where it's from. I I, I would imagine so. I mean, I would guess. <laughs> what sells better in America than French water? It just sounds.
You're listening to NGSC Sports Radio. Hear us live on NGSCSports.com where you can get awesome analysis for all things sport. Or check out our podcasts on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, and much more. For our latest videos, head to NGSC Sports' YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at NGSC Sports and like us on Facebook. NGSC Sports. We never stop. 